How do you do? Can I do something for you? Well, ma'am, I'm looking for a wife. Oh, well, I'm sorry. She didn't come in here. She didn't mean that, Millie. Uh, oh. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. No, ma'am, it ain't my wife I'm looking for. I've been commissioned, sort of, to find a wife for a friend. And somebody suggested this would be a good place to start looking. If he's a friend of yours, why do you want to find him a wife? Hmm? Oh, never mind. Here, just put down the name and address and give a brief description of the model desired, and I'll see what I can put you in touch with. Uh, this is a bit more urgent than that, ma'am. I know you're busy and got other things to do, but there's $500 in it for you if you can help me. $500? Whew, for that I'll get you a harem. Who's the wife for? Oh, uh, here's a picture of him. What a handsome cowboy. You mean he has to look for a wife? Oh, not the cowboy, ma'am. That's Roy Rogers, Jerry's ranch foreman. The other one is Jerry Johnson. What's the matter with him? Two left feet? No, ma'am. He's sound. Wait a minute. Isn't that the Jerry Johnson who inherited a million or so acres up north last year? Only 50,000 acres, ma'am. But he figures it's enough to keep a wife. Yes, I guess it is. Well, um, I'm sure Miss Love will find a way. Uh, I hope so, ma'am. And what is the matter with him? Is he shy? Shy? Why, he might be, ma'am. Yes, you can say he's shy and busy. Now, here's the address. It's the phoniest deal I ever heard in my life. With a playboy like that Johnson Brad who can get his pick of a hundred dames? I'll say it is. <laughs> hey, stop looking at me like that. Well, I've never seen a mail order bride before. What? Me and cowboys? Oh, no. Oh, now, Bailey. <laughs> oh, Mary, I don't expect you to go through with it. Do you think I'd let you marry a stranger just to get a story? Yes. Mary, I'm shocked. And you're the girl I hired because I thought she meant it when she said she wanted to be a great reporter. Where do great stories come from? Did Richard Harding Davis get his stories on darkest Africa, sitting on a beach in sunny California? Are great battle stories written comfortably behind the lines? A great reporter goes where the stories are. Mary, this might be your life's opportunity, and yet you hesitate. From fear of bullets, wild animals, disaster? No, simply because you're afraid of a playboy, a wedding ceremony, and cowboys. All right. I'll go. Good, Mary. I knew you'd do it. I'll get your tickets all ready, and Billy can go with you. Well, Rogers, where's that boss of yours? Well, we certainly thought he'd be here, Mr. Hawkins, or we wouldn't have fixed up this celebration. Well, it's too bad, but I'm afraid we'll have to forget the whole thing. That would mean a death sentence to all these people. Our lease on the land expires two weeks after we quit drilling, and we quit soon if you turn us down. Well, uh, tell me, is there some other way that my company can run a spur line in here up to that well without crossing Johnson's property? No, there isn't. And yet you're asking us to advance you enough money to finish the well on the vague sort of promise that we'll get the right of way. But couldn't you give us a little more time to get you the right of way? Say, two weeks? No, I'm afraid not. I can't come down here every time that Johnson thinks he might be able to see me. Please, Mr. Hawkins. Oh, all right. A couple of weeks. Trogan, I'll see if we can find Jerry. See you in town. The best place to look for him is under the bar at the Frontier Lodge. We'll go for the rent first. Suppose he didn't show up at the picnic because he'd changed his mind about the right-of-way contract. Then I'll have a picnic breaking his neck. Hey, Jerry, wait a minute! Your foreman was trying to flag you down, Jerry. Foreman me I, that was my nursemaid. That guy's a pain in the neck. Looks like they're gone for the day. Well, I might as well get my chores done. Wait a minute. Let the boys do it. We're going to the lodge. We might be able to head him off before he gets there. You better stay sober till the bride to be gets here. I wish you'd quit ribbing me. Honestly, do I look like the kind of a guy who would order a wife by mail? Exactly. 
And you'll find out I'm not ribbing you when she shows up at the lodge. <laughs> oh, boy, what a load I must have been carrying when I pulled that one. Lucky you got to help me. I'll be a good guy. Have somebody else take care of her. Put her up at your lodge for a few days. Show her a good time. Charge it all to me, but leave me out of it. I'll do the best I can. In the meantime, I don't think you ought to run over that wagon up ahead. That bugboard will hold him for us. That guy's going to blow his brains out with that horn. I guess he expects it to go straight up so he can drive under us. Hey, get those hay burners out of the road. The road's a little narrow. Oh, I can squeeze by. through the air and scare the horses worse. Why couldn't you have yelled, whoa? <laughs> the girls are very much alive, Frog. Don't jump to conclusions, cowboy. Hold a mirror up to our mouths. I'm not jumping. I've already decided you can take it. So your girlfriend deserves a good shaking up. <sighs> oh, all right, so you stop the horses, but you also jar the wheel off the wagon. Now how do we get to the Frontier Lodge? <laughs> Walk, I guess. Well, Rory, you can't leave two lovely ladies out here like this, even if one of them is ornery. You just take us up a taxi. Taxi frog. I'm sure I've seen you someplace. Well, you probably have if you've ever been out here before. I'm foreman over at the Jerry Johnson Ranch. Jerry Johnson? You know him? Oh, I've heard of him. What's he like? He's like the guy who just crowded you off of the road. Oh, so that was Jerry Johnson. Speedy, isn't he? <laughs> he needs plenty of right away and generally gets it. He's evidently dead at your fenders. No, I give him plenty of room. The only reason we're still working for him is that we promised his dad we'd stick around and keep things going. Well, after he's married, maybe he won't need you. Nobody will ever be able to hold him still long enough to marry him. <laughs> That's where you're wrong, cowboy. I came out here to attend his wedding. Right? Not on anything he does. I'm surprised at the company you're keeping, though. I'm not so sure of the company I'm keeping now. You might be a hold-up man on the side. You've certainly got enough guns. What about that notch in your rifle? Does that mean you've killed somebody? No, that means that somebody took a shot at me and hit the rifle instead. <sighs> what happened at the well today? The railroad company wouldn't kick in with the dough, but it gave them two more weeks to get Johnson's signature on the right-of-way contract. It's still okay. By that time, they'll have to come to me for the signature. And they're likely to get it, provided they give me a big enough interest in that oil well. Where is Jerry? Buck in the roll at. Keep him at it. He's expecting company. Okay, but he's losing his shirt. It's all right. Then go as far as he likes. All right. Well, it's none of my business how deep he gets into you, boss. But I heard some guys talking the other day, and they say Jerry can't pay off a nickel. His old man fixed it in the will so the kid can't sell his property. That's right. I don't get it. Then how are you going to take over? And him getting married, too. There'll even be less chance. I guess I ought to keep you better informed, Steve. That wedding was my idea. Jerry can't sell the ranch, and here's where I might need your help. His widow could, if he was married and had a widow. They're here. Okay, I'll be right off. The bride's here. Stick around, Jerry. I want to see her first. The girls have arrived. Here already? 
Well, that's all right. Lucky promised to keep him away from me. I'll keep out of sight. Well, you have quite a place here. And Lucky. Lucky, here I am. Seems to me somebody said you were shy, but I didn't expect to find you hiding under a roulette table. Well, how can I tell you? It'd be so beautiful. You'll soon find out how shy he is. But first, we're going to have a big get acquainted pre-wedding party. Tonight. What do you mean, a big get acquainted party? We have plenty of time to get acquainted after we're married. We'll make it a wedding party, get married tonight. Oh, oh, please now. A girl likes a little time to think it over. Oh, no, I mean it. You came out here to marry me, didn't you? Oh, yes, but uh, not tonight. Well, okay, okay. We won't get married tonight. We'll have a big party, like Lucky says. We'll get married tomorrow. Lucky, take care of everything, will you? I'll be glad to. <laughs> I'll get the girls settled. Wonderful party, Lucky, a wonderful party. You know, I'm getting very enthusiastic about Mary. It's going to be swell to have a wife out on the ranch to cook for me and mend my socks. And, and hey, why don't you get a wife, Lucky? You ought to get Millie that'll get a wife for you, too. Haven't you got a wife, Mr. Miller? Why do you think they call me Lucky? <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, that's Judge Pebble, Judge Pebble. What do you want? Just a couple of minutes of your time. I'm sorry to interrupt your party, but there's a little matter your neighbors want to know about. Oh, come back, baby. Yes, we're giving a party. There's no time to talk business now. Sit down and enjoy yourself. Oh, ask the judge to join the party. You might just as well, because I'm not going to talk to anybody until after my party. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Please. This is Miss Hardigan and Miss Love. Especially Miss Hardigan. Take a good look at her, because she's going to be a new boss. I've met the ladies before. Did you say new boss? That's right. We're going to be married in the morning. <laughs> I really did put my foot in it, didn't I? I'd like to wish you the best of luck, Miss Hardigan. I'll be glad to take orders from you. But I wish you'd use your influence. Tell him if he wants to do something to sing a song. He sings pretty good. I didn't come here to sing, Jerry. Tell him, boy, tell him. I think it'd be very nice. I'll tell you what I'll do. You sing a song, and afterwards I'll talk to you about the right of way. Is that a promise? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Hold a minute. Just a moment, folks. Our old friend Roy Rogers is going to give us a song.
has something to say to the judge? Yeah. I don't think it's a good deal, and I'm not going to do any more about it till I think it over a little longer. You mean you're not going to let the railroad cross your property? Yeah, that's just about what I mean. Well, I've known you to do a lot of crooked things, Jerry. But this is the dirtiest low-down deal I ever heard of. Go over and stop it. Wait a minute. Roy was invited to this party, but you wasn't. Just for that, Rogers. You're too late. I quit. Come on, Pro. Maybe Frog's here. So you girls run in the house for a minute. I want to talk to that guy. What's that for? I told you I was quitting. That's my gear. All that stuff yours? Well, some of it belongs to the boys. Well, what's it doing out here? I think they want to tell you themselves. Well, they'll get a chance right now. And, Rogers, if you talk them into walking out on me, you won't leave this ranch in one piece. Uh, why don't you just tell him the whole thing and let's go home? I can't get him to listen long enough. Oh, just let me get my hands on that bulldog, Bailey. Do you think we ought to get Roy to help us? Start another fight? No. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could find Frog. I know he'd help me. Yes, that's it. We've got to get out of here. They're all walking out on me, the dirty double crosses. Roy's fault. He talked him into it. I'll fix him. But, Jerry, I'm sorry things have gone wrong and you're so upset, but there's something I have to tell you. It's about us. Why I came up here and why I married you. Mary, I don't care why you married me. The fact you did suits me. Right now, I want to get this business with the boys settled. I'll kill that guy. But, Jerry, what you don't know about me is that Look, I... Look, Mary, will you please not bother me now? I want to get this thing straightened out. Rogers is pulling a fast one on me. Hello. Let me talk to the sheriff. But you just got here. I know we just got here, and we just want to leave. Oh, Frog, it's a long story. Everything's gone wrong. We want to go back to the lodge and then take the train home. Well, I'd like to take you, but Roy's waiting for me. Oh, Frog, I came to you because I thought you were the one big, strong, unafraid man we could depend on. Well, I'll take you all right in the jalopy. I don't feel very strong when you look at me like that. Ah, oh, you're a darling. Well, come on. Okay, but you better make it fast. monkey business? She's not running away from me. Well, she's not running away from me either. When I catch her, I'll give her a lesson she won't forget. But first, I'm going to settle with you. and somebody's liable to get hurt. I'm going after him.
couldn't arrive at a better time. Is he dead? Very. Over right over the side, eh? Been drinking? Yes. But it wasn't the accident or the alcohol that killed him. There's a little matter of a bullet hole in his head. We thought we heard a shot down the line. Roy, I'm sorry about this. Jerry phoned and said he'd been having trouble with you. I didn't suppose it was this serious. Well, you don't think I killed him, do you? You gone crazy, Sheriff? Why, that galoot probably shot that hole in his own head. He was running wild. He didn't shoot himself. There was a bullet hole through the windshield. From there on, you're going to have to figure it out. Let me see your guns. That hole in the windshield was put in there by a rifle bullet. Went clear through. Why, that's not your gun, Roy. Sorry, Roy, but you're under arrest. Sheriff, that's not my rifle. That means whoever killed Jerry was still here while I was down in the gorge. Don't you think you ought to at least take a look around? I aim to, but not until after I've taken you in. That kind of puts me on the spot, doesn't it? I'm afraid it does. You're being mighty foolish, Roy. Maybe so, but it looks like if anybody's going to catch the guy who really killed Jerry, it's going to have to be me. do now? Looks like there's only one thing to do. Let's ride back to town on one horse and get up a posse. What now? I'm going to talk to Miller and check up on his honor, the judge. You want me to go with you? No, you go back to the room and wait. I've got to call in for Bailey and I don't want to miss it. No matter what happens, if you get him on the wire, hold him there till I get back. I don't care if it takes all night. Okay. <laughs> Is Mr. Miller in his office? Oh, I think he went down to the tack room, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you. Mrs. Johnson. I, uh, I was told I could find Mr. Miller here. Well, he was here and left. Thank you. They caught Rogers? Not that I know of, ma'am. What made you think they'd captured Rogers, Miss Johnson? Oh, I just wondered if they had. That'll probably take some time, the way he knows this country. The clerk said you were looking for Mr. Miller. He asked me to tell you he's in his office now. Thank you. Get rid of that. What do you want me to do with it? I don't care. Bury it. Throw it in the river. Anything but advertise it for sale in the newspapers. Okay. Hey, uh, Steve. Speaking of newspapers, just reminds me where I've seen that dame before. You mean? Yeah, Mrs. Johnson. She was in the newspaper office when I went there. She works there. She's a reporter. You sure of that? Positive. Come on, I was lucky to hear this. I want Bailey and nobody else. And if he isn't there, I want you to tell me where I can find that low-lying double-crosser. Oh, Mary. How could you talk about me like that? With no effort at all. Where have you been? You promised. Yes, Mary, I know I promised, but... But I'm a sick man. Well, can I help it if I got... Can I help it if I got sick? Oh, that's all right, Mary. I knew that you'd understand. Now then, tell me, what have you got so far? Lucky Miller. Holy smokes. Do you think he bumped him off personally? No, it begins to look like a community project with Jerry's foreman doing the actual killing and Miller directing the show. All right, now listen, Mary. I'm going to tell you just what to do. In the morning, turn over all your facts to the law out there. Shoot in your story and hop the first train back here. Okay. And Bulldog, I'm sorry you're sick. Oh, that's all right, Mary. I'll get along. Good luck, Mary. She'll need more than luck. You were right. She is a reporter, and she knows enough already to cause a lot of trouble. Maybe I'd better go up and have a talk with her. Not here in the lodge. You better go along with her when she takes her ride in the morning. 
Sure, look out point on the cliff trail, but don't let it get too close to the edge. There's a 500 foot drop there. How you figure to do it? You going in the lodge and ask the desk clerk if you can see Mrs. Johnson? Well, maybe if there's no other way. Yeah. Maybe she'll come to the jail and see us on visitor's day. We better not go by the trail. That's just the way we are going. That could be the lady we're looking for. This is Lookout Point, Miss Johnson. You can see clear across to your ranch from here. Well, I'm not going to look over it. I get dizzy when I stand on a thick rock. The ranch house is in that far clump of trees. Uh, I'm not going to look again. It makes me want to jump. Oh! Oh, Millie, don't be childish. Never mind. Your horse won't want to jump. Good morning, folks. Why, it's Roy. Rogers. I wouldn't do that, Corlin. Look. You still ain't been invited to the party, Steve. Frog! Hello, Millie. Throw your gun away, Steve. You ain't gonna need it anymore. Yeah, toss it over the cliff. Now that the dramatic's over, maybe you'll go on about your business. My business is with you, ma'am. I want to talk to you about the ranch and that railroad right-of-way. I have nothing to talk about with you. Then I'll have to insist. Then it'll be in jail, because I'll have the sheriff on your trail in another half hour. I still intend to talk to you. I guess we'd better find a place with a little more privacy. Frog, bring Millie along as a chaperone. Oh, why, Frog, you're kidnapping me. You see the sheriff, tell him we went that away. I'd like to have music with this. Okay. You know, I believe if you knew how important that right-of-way is to the people in this neighborhood, you'd let them have it right now. I'm not interested in what you do or don't believe, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> well, you can be as stubborn as you like, but in this case, you're going to do as I say. I saw Jerry after you killed him, so I know what you're capable of. But you can't frighten me into doing anything I don't want to do. I'm sure glad you're not my jury. They'll at least hear my side of the story, and I'm getting awful tired telling you I didn't kill Jerry. Then why are you hiding out up here? And why are you trying to force me into this land deal? And why are you tied up with somebody like Lucky Miller? Miller? Well, I'm not tied up with him or anybody else. I happen to know better. I saw your rifle in his tack room at the lodge. Buck Walters has probably got it cleaned up nicely for you by this time. Ready to use again. Are you sure you saw my rifle at the lodge? Absolutely. If you remember, I commented on the notch once before. Although I was surprised you hadn't cut another one in it. Frog.
What is this, Roy? A necktie party if you don't talk and talk fast. You've gone crazy, Roy. I got nothing to talk about. Then maybe you can think of something. Trigg is a well-trained horse, Buck. He'll string you up to that raptor like a monkey on a stick when I tell him to. Now then, why did you kill Jerry? Me? I wasn't within 20 miles of Johnson when he got killed. That's not the right answer. Come on. Stop, Roy. I didn't do it. Then who did? Ed. Come with me. That rope's just about run out, Buck. And I can only stop him so fast. But I didn't kill him. You can stretch my neck, it won't do any good. That's the truth. I didn't kill him. Stop that horse. But you know who did kill him. I don't know nothing about it. Don't, Roy, stop. Then what will you do with my rifle? Speak up, quick. Don't, please don't, Roy. Send the sheriff down here. Dump that guy into my office. Wait a minute. I haven't got your rifle. I buried it. Corlin told me to after that newspaper woman seen it here. Newspaper woman? Mrs. Johnson? Yeah. And Lucky knows it? Yeah. Where are you going? To get the sheriff. I want you to tell him what you told me. Sheriff, I'm glad to see you. That's just about what you said the last time. Take his gun. I was on my way to get you. What are you talking about? Buck Walters has a story about who killed Jerry Johnson, and it wasn't me. I don't believe it. Well, you will. All right, let's go. So you got him, huh? Good. Is Buck Walters in there? He certainly is. With a knife on his back and Roy's lariat around his neck. Well, I just left him. He was all right then. He isn't all right now. He's dead. Hey, Roy. It's me, Frog. Where have you been, Frog? Asleep? Oh, no. Honest, I ain't. He went and slugged me. Who? Lucky. He tried to get me to tell him where the girls was. But I fooled him. I sent him clean to the North Fork of the Gila River. You sent him where? To Ghost Town, near the North... North... South. Oh, my goodness. That's where they are. <laughs> this toothache, Roy, must make me do a thing like that. Well, how long ago did they leave? Oh, about an hour. Well, I'm getting out here. Let me have your gun. I ain't got no gun. Lucky took it away from me. Let me have your gun belt. Now listen. Get Trigger and have him ready. Keep an eye on the sheriff. He's out front. Leave it to me. You can't see Roy if that's what you're figuring on, Frog. Oh, I didn't come into town to see him. One of my wisdom teeth been hit me on the head, and I come in to let the dentist take a look at it. I wish I hadn't. Why not? took a gimmick with a needle that long and shoved it into my mouth and stabbed me. <laughs> I bet my grandpappy felt that clean back in 1865. <laughs> oh, don't laugh yet. Wait till I tell you.
just as I'm beginning to feel like my face belongs to somebody else, what does he do but wheel in a gadget with a grindstone on it that big and shoves it in my mouth and crawls in after it and gives me one of these... <laughs> and I can't play no harp. You better take the other route around. Stay here with the horses. The rest get around. your story for you. Too bad the boys had to be in on it. Tie them up.
hitch the horses to the wagon. Mary!
like Old Man River did the job for us. You men are under arrest. I'll take that gun. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? Mrs. Johnson told me enough to send you up for life. Yeah, I'm all right. A little wet. There's your right of way. Thank you. And here's our company's check for ten thousand dollars. There's plenty more where that came from if you need it. You can't know what this means. There it is, folks. Hooray! Just one other little matter of business before we bring this first annual meeting to a close. Mary here feels that she'd like to do something as a sort of a monument to the memory of Jerry and his father. So she's going to throw the whole Johnson property into our cooperative oil company, Share and Share Alike. Right. Sure. So, Mary, we all... Are... Meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Mary, I suppose you'll be getting back to your newspaper where there's a little excitement. Excitement? Roy, uh, may I say that in your quiet country way, you boys up here managed to make a newspaper office look about as exciting as a Tiddlywinks tournament. <laughs> and uh, another thing, uh, guess again if you think you're going to get me out of here before our oil well comes in. You mean you're going to stay a while? Oh, gee, that's great, Mary. That'll give us a chance to, uh, well, you and I, <laughs> I mean... Why don't you sing it, cowboy? <laughs> Maybe I better. But free I'll be found. Living along with a tumbling tumbleweed. Cares of the past are behind. No where to go but I'll find. Just where the trail will wind. Living along with a tumbling tumbleweed. I know. When night has gone, that a new world's born at dawn. Honest, Millie, there comes a time in every man's life when he's just got a... Oh, my tooth, it's hard for me to talk. Oh, go on, Frog, say it. Well, sooner or later, every man... <laughs> my toothache's gone. Oh, but what were you going to say, Frog? Sooner or later, every man's got to have his tooth full. Oh, Frog. To the broken hearts that roam, and as you travel along the villains of gray, they all unravel and pull you homeward to stay, cause highways.